Hello everyone, uh, Lacrity here, and today we'll be doing something new. Um, it's actually my first commentary, and uh, yeah, I'll be going over my games from the Masters of Wood Elf Tournament hosted by the Viking TW. And um, unfortunately, I don't have the real-time gameplay footage saved, uh, namely because the tournament was held at a such inconvenient time for me. I still wanted to participate in this event because it was a qualifier where you do get to represent as the Wood Elves in the finals. And if you know, they're one of my favorite factions to play. So um, let's get started. In my first round, uh, I got matched with RTK Maker and being on the upper side of the bracket, he had to go Wood Elves when he then bans Bretonia and Dwarfs. So I went with High Elves and um, Let's see how it shaped up. So I went with a rather meta army here. I went with Larry with our usual kit loadout. Uh, you know, Star of Avalorn, Shieldstone of Isha, Boon of Isha. Um, I also have uh, Noble in my hero core uh, because, you know, you never know with Wood Elves nowadays because they might rush you with something like a Tree Man build or like, yeah, and... Um, Having some AP is nice because if you can see, the rest of my army actually doesn't have much armor piercing. Um, and the Noble has his stock item, the Armor of the Stars, and I believe the Missile Resist item, the Sacred Incense, which gives, I believe, 12% Missile Resist, um, which is nice. You know, if you put them, put them near Dragon Princes, they get that Missile Resist, which helped them negate. Uh, some of the range pressure that the Wood Elves will generally bring this matchup. Um, for my skirmishing core, I've got three Shadow Warriors. And um, yeah, they are pretty effective against Wood Elves, you know, general light armor. Uh, they don't have AP, but, um, you know, they do have decent range, fire 360. And they ha compared to Way Watchers, they have 60 models compared to. Uh, the Way Watchers 45. Uh, I also have one unit of um, Loth and Sea Guard with shields, and um, they're also very nice. Uh, 55 missile block chance from the front, um, alongside uh, four units of spearmen that form my front line. Um, they'll trade decently into Eternal Guards, and they'll do very well against the Cav in prolonged melee combat. Um, and uh, for my cavalry core, I have two units of Dragon Princes, one of them being the ROR, uh, Fireborn. And these guys are really nice because they do fire damage. They have bonus versus large. Of course, they're going to be the center of attention for any missile pressure. Um, these, they're very expensive, but they're worth it. I mean, Dragon Princes in this matchup has always been, you know, one of the key advantages High Elves have over Wood Elves. Um, on the other side, hidden in the trees, you can see I have one unit of Elyria and Reavers, and they're a pretty good unit as well. Um, they don't have shields, but they will beat Glade Riders in 1v1 as long as it's in the open field. Um, if, it's, if they're fighting in the forest, uh, then I believe Elyria and Reavers lose because they don't have the Forest Stalker trait, and they, well, you get a, you get a, a melee debuff in the forest as long as they're large and you don't have the woodsman's trait so for my opponent uh rtk maker um also a very better build the glady with the uh, prey of anathrema and arrow kernis the spell singer of life on a horse uh stripped down with just uh, earth blood regrowth two units of of uh way watchers for armor piercing uh ranged pressure. Um, and for the Cavalry Corps, three units of Glade Riders, uh, which are very good at shutting down, you know, range play from the High Elves, as well as two units of Great Stag Knights. And um, yeah, for the Armor Piercing, uh, super high charge, uh, you know, Shock Cap, basically. Uh, for his front line, he brought five units of um, Eternal Guard with Shields. Armor piercing, very good against Dragon Princes. So let's get started. Um, at first, you know, I just shift my formation because I can see his units. He can't see my Dragon Princes, of course, and also he can't see my Noble. I pop 
the armor of the stars to get unspottable and a full sweeper just to do some scouting because I think you know in this matchup you're generally going to see way watchers and um, yeah way watchers are what you want to be shooting with with your shadow warriors whereas for the wood elves the way watchers want to be shooting the dragon princess um, the glady comes out to scout and spots my uh, shadow warriors I pull back and I pop Larry first and pop a tempest so this is a very good countermeasure against flying units. Um, you have 72% speed reduction, and I believe it also does around 800 damage to single entities. Uh, against multi-bottle entities, I believe it does around 1,000, like 600-ish, which is a lot. But yeah, did some decent damage. Uh, RTK Maker pops regrowth and fires a single shot into Larry. Now I'm just doing some light skirmishing, uh, shooting the Glade Riders, while also on the right flank, I managed to charge these uh, Illyrian Reavers into these Glade Riders, who didn't get a counter charge. Got some decent damage, he pulls in his Eternal Guard, and I pull back. So very nice uh, early skirmishing from me. I believe um, I got the upper hand in these trades, you know, put some pressure on. Um, I still haven't spotted the Shadow Warriors, but they are on fire at will, which means I can't actually see them. Um, because, yeah, that's kind of kind of a bug in this game. But, you know, I keep on rotating because I see his uh, Stag Knights are posturing on this side, so... And I'm um, just using up my ammo. Um, as, you know... As high elves, you can be kind of liberal with your ammo usage on your shadow warriors because you know everything on the wood elf roster except for like tree man and treekin are not very highly armored, so they're, they're all worth shooting. I've done really good damage on these blaze riders so far. One of these uh, eternal guard kind of overexpended, so I get in a charge with my Illyrian reavers here. Pop another tempest to uh, dissuade the lady. So I got a nice charge, immediately pulls back, send in the spearmen to uh, prevent the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Glade Riders from getting more damage, and also pop. Well, actually, my opponent pops, uh, I believe, an Earthblood there. Stagnates are moving down my left flank. I have some uh, turn off, I mean, spearmen. And I'm going to position them. Also, send in the uh, Loth and Seaguard to hold up these uh, Loth and Seaguard, or these, uh, these Eternal Guard. And you can see the right flank, I've, I've done a really good job sending in the, sending in the, sending in the Dragon Princes. And um, already crushed one unit of um, Glade Riders that was already pretty low due to the counter skirmishing from my, uh, well, due to the skirmishing from my Shadow Warriors. Here, this is also doing pretty well. We have uh, Glade Riders stuck on Spears. Two units of Spears will beat this one unit of Eternal Guard. And um, yeah, I'm getting one unit of Dragon Princess right now into these Way Watchers because I see um, he had an opening, right? He was trying to go for my back line, but left an opening in the gap here, which allowed me to exploit. Um, and uh, he does the correct move. I guess here, which is to try and shoot my uh, Dragon Princess, Fireborn specifically. And I had them, as you can see, uh, facing the wrong way, so they don't even actually have their missile block chance up. And they are taking quite a bit of damage, losing one model already. And um, let's see my response here. So I pop an Earth Blood, pop Star of Aberworn, and also. Yeah, so I also have the pressure relieved by sending in my Dragon Princes, so they're no longer being shot. And the Star of Avalorn is just healing uh, the Shadow Warriors and the Fireborn right now. Um, I could also fit in another unit in here to try and get maximum value. Uh, the Stag Knights are trying to respond by attacking the Fireborn, but I do have one unit of Spearmen to buffer right now. And you can see... You know, this is actually going pretty well. You can see the balance of powers already massively in my favor. 
I've killed about 135 troops, 136 troops, only losing about um, less than 100 here. Uh, what is it, 70 troops here, yeah. And the Wood Elf army is smaller than mine. So right now I would say I'm in an advantageous position. I'm trying to shut down the Way Watchers with my Dragon Princess, but I do get countercharged by the Glade Riders. I have the Leon Reavers sent forward. The Stag Knights are pulling back. I also have Shield of Thorns popped, actually, um, on these units. And the Shield of Thorns is really nice, gives the physical resist, buffed them up to 42% uh, physical resist, which is really nice. Gives them also uh, non-AP damage, which is, you know, which is considerable against, um, I mean, you don't need AP against Wood Elves. So I think overall right now I'm going, you know, I think it's decisively in my favor. I have the Lear, I, mean, I have the Glade Riders on the run. Uh, the... Stag Knights pull back, and uh, they're charging my Dragon Princess to help save his back line. And I've sent in my Fireborn here. And I think this is one of the big mistakes that I'm kind of committing in this fight. I'm just being a bit too overly aggressive. Um, because, I mean, I've already done good damage, right? I mean, I'm winning the skirmish fight, and there's really no reason for me to try and shut down these Way Watchers and sending three units, like basically my entire calf core unsupported. Um, you know, he does have one unit of Eternal Guard here, uh, which is going to do really well against my Dragon Princess. Um, I have, you know, one unit of Way Watchers already routed. I still have my range core fairly healthy. I mean, if I just step back and let my range units just, you know, focus down the Way Watchers, because you see... That, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm focusing down the Way Watchers. I could go and just, you know, just clean up these Eternal Guard, you know, get some get some nice rear charges, you know, into these Eternal Guard and um, clean up my lines and I would just, you know, just play, play it safe, right? But, um, you know, I've also lost games in the past where I've been too passive, but this clearly, you know, is a situation where I was ahead. And I don't need to take any more risk. And you can see what's happening. I send Larry forward because I do want to take out these great stag knights. And Larry do, um, with her boon of Isha, do provide magic damage. I did get on top of these shadow warriors. Or, not shadow warriors, way watchers. And they're taking a bit of damage. But I'm also taking a lot of damage on my dragon princess in return. I'm, I am sending in one unit of spearmen, but they are quite late. And you can see, my fireborn is taking a lot of damage. Um, Maker sends in the Glady, actually, and she got two massive hits on, 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 uh, on, Eli on Ilario, and this was happening so fast. I mean, she was, she was in the middle of her cat of, of the calf, you know, she wasn't completely isolated, but the Glady managed to get two, like, consecutive hits. Now, the Stag Knights are still charging in, doing good damage. My Ilian Reavers is, uh, wavering right now. The Glady pulls out. Um, gets back into the air. I was trying to, you know, at this point, I was trying to get my noble into the fight, but it was stuck on spears. And you can see here, two massive hits on the on Larry, and she begins to wave it. Uh, I send in the noble to block up the lady, but then you can see she still fires a shot right into a Larry L, and she and she begins to rout immediately. The noble couldn't pin down the pin down the lady, and she gets back into the air. And now you know she has like you know Larry is just basically prey to, to the lady. There's nothing much I can do. You know I can't cast Tempest right now. I just have these three units of sh of, of shadow warriors trying to you know dissuade her from from uh, from chasing Larry. But there's nothing much I can do. And and you know in the main fight over here. I'm taking a lot of damage. These Stag Knights are still very healthy, but the Dragon Princes are, you know, all very low. And, La and Larry gets chased off the field. Like, very unfortunate. Um, and I'm beginning to run out of ammo, too, on my, on, my, on my skirmishers. So I'm beginning to run out of a lot of answers to these Stag Knights, as you can see. 
I mean, I've done a good amount of damage to his back line, but was it really worth it to lose Larry? I mean, this is the question, right? Because I didn't have to take that that reckless engagement there. I mean, I felt I was ahead, right? And I could have just stayed ahead by being, um, by, by just playing safe. And you can see, you know, my, my Fireborn, they don't have healing now. Larry's off the map. Uh, these Sea Guard, they were holding down the Eternal Guard for a long time, but they lost the combat. Now, you know, my, my Shadow Warriors are engaged. I mean, Shadow Warriors will trade very well. They, they do have very good combat stats for a skirmisher. And, um, Harold Kernis goes down to use Fireborn. He knows, you know, these are the main threats to his Dag Knights. Spearman can do okay in prolonged combat, but he is pulling them out. And, um, yeah, my only real answer is the Noble right now. And I don't, and I'm just, like, losing my mobility. These Dag Knights being faster than the Fireborn are gonna catch up to them, so I have to counter charge. And this is not an engagement I want, you know, I want them to be buffered with spears. You charge into my Shadow Warriors. I do get a surround off here, which is nice. And I uh, pop Full Seeker on the Noble to try and get a few hits in. But, you know, this is what happens when you lose mobility. You start losing control of the game. I mean, the enemy only has 91 troops, but it's hard for me to, to you know, like, to actually pin them down. And uh, my opponent can just cycle charge for day. Um, Life Singer, way off in the distance. Yeah, this is like, I mean, in, especially in a, like a, you know, elf civil war, you know, dark elf, wood elf, high elf match. Things can go, things can go wrong real fast because you're playing with squishy units. And you just saw Larry died in just seconds. Like, I didn't even really have much time to respond. She died in four hits and, um, you know, just two cycle charges. And she was within her cab unit, which, you know, granted, wasn't supported with infantry, but I don't know. I felt, I felt it was a reckless engagement in hindsight. I mean, that was where basically I lost the game. The Glady can cycle charge, um, and there's not much I can do, you know? Like, I could try and just hit her when she's on the ground, but I'm trying my best, you know? I'm trying to just force pass my way to, uh, to get in, in range. To hit her, but he, he gives the uh, he uh, activates Prado Fan the Frame, gets one volley with these Way Watchers. I have to send one, you know, Spearman to screen them out. And yeah, I'm just having these, you know, these infantry units try and catch these Stag Knights while they while they um, while they try and cycle charge. And there's not much you can do now now that I've lost, you know, my units of Dragon Princes. I have the Unity Reverse. And, um, I mean, I guess the correct thing to do now is to blob up with my units. You know, so then I can't get Cycle Charge as hard. Uh, the, the Noble does get a bit isolated here. He takes a lot of damage. I mean, the Spearman wasn't really, you know, supporting him. He's also dishing out quite a bit of damage to these, uh, these stagnites as well, but I mean, the balance of power is still favoring me. I still have 258 troops versus 68, but it's just you know, it is it is a situation where you just don't get cycle charged. He still has magic as well. I don't know what his wins situation is. He did use a regrowth very early on. But yeah, I mean, this is just frustrating. Whenever you're in this situation, when you lose your mobility, and um, I I brace in time, but uh, you know the spell singer uh, breaks the brace, allows the stagnant to do a lot of damage, and one arrow furnace, one charge. Basically, you know the balance of power just changes immediately like that. You know you lose your you lose your leadership. And, um, yeah, there's nothing much that can kill these, these units unless if they stay in prolonged combat, which you won't, you know. 
He still has one unit of Eternal Guard engaged onto these uh, Shadow Warriors, and um, yeah, I call it a quits there. So let's just look at the post-battle report. I mean, this was a really frustrating loss because, you know, I had the lead and I just basically I threw it. It was because everything else was going very well, you know. I basically won. I was winning, I guess, in the in the trading army department. Um, you could just see in the trades, right? Like I've lost less units. He had less units um, alive by the end of the game. And you can see, you know, these Shadow Warriors, they pay for themselves. You know, they only cost 850. And they got what? 14, 1400 here, 1500 here, 1200 here. They definitely pay for themselves. You know, they got chevrons. These dragon princes, they did well. 1600, 1700. These fireborn almost pay for themselves, actually. Actually, yeah, the, these fireborn, I mean, they are very expensive. So you have to do a lot of work with them. So I was about like 150 gold less than that. We and Reaver pays for themselves. You know, basically everything in my army pay for themselves. I mean, this was 100 gold off. But my leadership core, they just... Leadership core, you know? Like, this is... In Warhammer, you have to not only win the army battle, but also win the leadership. And um, Larry on a horse, I mean, she is pretty squishy, as you can see. And the uh, lady, man, she just carried, th uh, you know, 3,000 gold worth of damage done. Spellsinger, I mean doesn't need to do much this one unit of eternal guard amazingly did a thousand damage wow that's crazy no chevrons though but um you know if you just look this unit of stagnite didn't pay for himself these these glade riders just got absolutely destroyed and um way watchers did okay but you know not 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 as good as these uh these shadow warriors so yeah I guess the moral of that that game is that um, I was being way too aggressive. Uh, there was no reason for me to take that fight unsupported with my cab uh, to try and shut down the Waywatchers because I was winning the skirmish battle in the first place. I just needed to focus down the Waywatchers with my three units of Shadow Warriors against this one unit of Waywatchers and, um, and the game would have been over. You know, I could have won the frontline fight as well because it was going my way. And um, unfortunately, unfortunately, I just made one error and that costed me the game. So I'm 1-0 down. And uh, in my, uh, in the second round, I had to go as what else? And I banned uh, Tomb Kings and Bretonia. My opponent, RTK Maker, counters with, uh, with Lizardmen. And... Um, they're a pretty decent faction against Widows. I've always thought they were slightly favored because um, Lizardmen have more options than Widows, in my opinion. Um, they could camp with solar engines. They could do a kiting with a bunch of stinks. They could rush with you know a bunch of infantry or cav. Like they they have options. Whereas I think as Wood Elves, you have to really play just a very standard build. Um, I went with the Ancient Tree Man here because I wanted just to have a really cheap terror source. Most people like to go Durthu, but like Durthu a lot of times would just get kited from my experience. And um, you are spending a lot of money on Durthu, right? The Ancient Tree Man, he costs about like 400 gold less, I believe. He has uh, Lore of Life, which means you don't have to bring a secondary life caster or a branch wraith just for, you know, the, the earth blood. He also has, you know, the Squirrel of Shielding, which is really nice. Uh, Call of the Woods. I mean, his his he basically has the same defensive stats as Durthu, but he just has less melee attack. I mean, I believe Durthu has 65, where he, along with uh, Blessing or Call of the Woods, only have 42. But, like, are you really going to be doing a lot of damage if you're getting kited, right? So I just prefer to have a really cheap terror causing monster that's tanky you know and uh, just go more wider in my army because i find in this matchup against lizardmen you just you just have to endure and the best way to endure is to just have a lot of you know infantry you know you, of course all your infantry are expensive you know 550 and um and um, they're still going to take damage from, you know, skink skirmishers and javelins and, you know, all these other blow darts. But 
it's better that they take damage than you know than your other squishy or assets, and um, that's why I'd like to have uh, just more infantry. And uh, speaking of my infantry, I have four units of Eternal Guard, all with shields forming up the front line, four units of Dryads forming the back line, uh, and one unit of War Dancer Azurai Spear for the uh, Dino Killing Power. Uh, for my range core, I have five units of Glade Guard, two regular, two Starfire, one Hagbane, and I have two units of, uh, of Wild Riders. For my opponent, uh, he went with uh, also pretty standard, which is basically like a camp slash kite build, where you go double Bastilodon Solar Engine, uh, four units of Chameleon Skinks, um, he has four units of Saurus Warriors, which will do really well against Wood Elves because Saurus Warriors have very high weapon strength, right? Not not a lot of armor piercing, but they have you know. But Wood Elves don't have you know very high armored infantry unit to begin with, so they will do very well in the front line. And he has three units of uh, Skin Cohort Javelins. These guys do so much damage against Wood Elves. Um, Yes, they only have three ammunition, but like 120 models of javelins throwing at you, that's a lot of damage. He has two units of uh, Cold One riders, you know, just basic Cold One riders. They'll do well. Have some AP. They could do well against the Tree Man. Um, two solar engines. Uh, these laser dinos, I mean, they're basically like the bane of Wood Elves. They'll delete models. They do fire damage and magic damage, and they'll do pierce the physical resist of the ancient tree man. Um, and then he has Lord Master Mundi with Net of Amantok, Apotheosis, um, Shield of the Old Ones, Banishment, Cold-Blooded, Greater Arcane Conduit, um, and uh, that, uh, that Missile Resist, Banner of Hexwaddle, I believe. Hexawaddle. That, uh, that's really nice. So let's see. So I have to move forward because he has the two pistol on solar engine that outranges me. And uh, he's shooting into my glade guard, which is, you know, the correct call. My, uh, my eternal guards are moving forward. They're just uh, screening away the skink chame chameleon skinks so they cannot shoot my, uh, my skirmishers here. And I begin opening fire on these, uh, on these Saurus warriors. They only have 35% missile block chance, I believe. And um, I need to break through this front line in order to get through these, uh, these solar engine, if he's screening well. So I have my Eternal Guard in front just to screen, but then I pull them back because, you know, Eternal Guards are actually pretty important in this matchup because they can actually do well against these heavily armored uh, dinosaurs. And I'd rather have this, um, the Dryads fight the Saurus Warriors because the Dryads, well, the Dryads, um, you know, they're kind of expendable. They're, they're, they're mainly to kill Skinks and stuff. I get a good charge on these uh, Skink Javelins, but you can see how much damage they're already taking, you know, just from the, just from the skirmish play. Uh, I'm trying to get onto these Chameleon Skinks, but he sends in his Cold One Rider, which I respond by pushing back. And you can see, you know, with the focus fire, I was able to take out these two units of uh, of uh, Saurus Warriors and form holes in the line. One of my unit of Wild Riders got uh, overzealous and um, and is caught up with the Cold One Riders, but it is you know buying me time. And um, I think in this situation here, it's already looking pretty good for me, but. Ideally, I think I would have wanted to have these uh, Dryads actually form, get a rear charge into these uh, into these Saurus Warriors instead of over chasing these Saurus Warriors. Because like, I mean, yes, they could go and help support and try and catch these Chameleon Skinks or try and catch these Cohort Javelins. But um, I think it's more important for me to win the front line, actually. I also should have sent in my uh, my ancient tree man because he's just standing here. He could be, you know, rear charging the Saurus Warriors, trying to get a quick terror route. And um, yeah, the the Cold Wild Riders is trying to chase my uh, my Wild Riders, so I'm screening with my Eternal Guard, 
And this is why Eternal Guard is so good in this matchup. They'll do well against the Cav. They'll do well against the Dinos. You know, they have the Silver Shields, but, you know, that's why you don't want them taking engagements with the Soros Warriors early on. Because they will lose to Soros Warriors. And um, this, this is not the best of trades. So I'm breaking through the front line, explaining the gaps. Now I'm in range of the solar engine. I'm just pouring shots, you know, putting pressure on. I've shattered this unit of uh, of Soros and I'm sending them in melee to tie them up. This unit of Eternal Guard is going to help against this unit of Cold Line Riders. And with the Eternal Guard support, I was able to screen off these Cold Lines and get a good charge on these skin cohorts. So yeah, Ancient Tree Man gets the rear charge, but it's kind of too late because these these dryers just get wrecked by, uh, by these. But I do get a quick terror out, as you can see. And I send in the uh, War Answers. So yeah, I'm already putting a lot of pressure. Eternal Guard is already on here. And he drops the Banishment, which is nice. I mean, I, don't, I really don't like the fact that you can just drop Banishment so close. Uh, they remove the minimum cast range. But, um... I mean, it is what it is, and it, it destroys my unit of Dryads, but I do have Eternal Guard already pressuring Last and Wendy. These skin cohorts are taking a lot of damage. As I were dancers uh, caught some of these Cold One Riders. Amazing. They popped their Woven Mist, so they have the 44% uh, Missile Resist, which is the main source of damage they're going to take throughout most of this battle anyways. And with Focus Fire, you know, I'm eliminating the Lizardman Mobility here. I have some regroup units that I could be uh, sending in back into the fight. But overall, you know, I've basically cleared up all the Source Warrior except for this one. Right here. And it is trying to pressure me. As my Ward Answers with, uh, with the Ancient Tree Man already putting a lot of pressure on the Solar Engine. Pop Awakening of the Woods to slow them down and I'm just going to focus fire with, with my Glade Guard to just eliminate them. The, the left flank has been more of a wash. I mean, I've lost my... Uh, Wild Riders, and um, uh, but then you know I, I do have Eternal Guard to send in, and they'll do very well. He does get an overcast in net to um, slow my pursuit of these Laser Dinos, but um, I mean, I mean he is putting pressure, you know, like with these these Chameleon Skinks, they're they're, they're gonna you know start putting damage in. I don't have any units to screen them out anymore. I mean, I could be sending in these Dryads, which I... Yep, okay, I'm doing that right now. These Wild Riders were chasing this Saurus. Over chasing a bit. And we do have some more Dryads in the back. And I'm just trying to kite away from his, um, from his Skinks. I mean, I don't want to shoot them. But there's... Um, yeah, I'm also running low on ammo now. Because I was firing at will. With them the entire battle. But at this point... You know, I think I've had the advantage. Um, I still have the mobility. He, he, he actually, well, he also has his cold ones as well. But I also have, you know, these word answers that are doing very well against these laser dinos. And um, the back line isn't as important now because they spend a lot of their ammo and, um, you know, as long as I have the Word answer is alive. I think I could, you know, do very well against uh, all of the remaining Lizardman units. He's dropping a banishment, which does a lot of good damage as well. But you know, I still managed to route these two units. So, uh, chameleon skinks. I mean, these guys are just so annoying. Like they take so long to route, and I've been like trying to, you know, get rid of them. Uh, finally, I, I managed to get out of my blob. I send in the, um, send in my Wild Riders. I believe he casted a net, but I also cast the uh, Earth Blood. And you can see, you know, these Word Answers, they're doing good work on the Solar Engine. Uh, the other Eternal Guard, which I kept alive because um, I didn't send him to die against the Saurus, they were able to put good pressure on the, the Solar, Solar Engine. And then the Tree Man right now, he is just, you know, he can tank all of this damage. Um, I managed to trap some of these Chameleons, and um, yeah, right now it just looks like the Lizardman just doesn't really have too much answers left. 
Um, I still have the remaining bit of ammo shooting into Master Lindy. But like, there's no way he can fight the Ancient Tree Man, right? And um, yeah, this Basilodon's about to shatter. And then, uh, and then once it's shattered, I could use, I could use pull this uh, Azurite Spear to go and win the other fights. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty attritious battle. I mean, th this matchup, I find it is like a battle of attrition. That's why I like to have a lot of infantry. And you can see, um, I traded pretty well. I mean, I lost less troops, I had more troops in the end. Um, the Saurus, they just didn't get their value, really, because they were getting focus fired down by the Glade Guard. And, um, you know, some of them, they did get their charges on the Dryads, but like... I mean, the Dryads are just there to, 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 to just, um for the frontline fight anyways. It's, it's mainly the Eternal Guard that you really want to save till the end because you want to be dealing with these dinos and you don't want to be wasting them early on fighting Saurus. Uh, the War Dancers, I mean, they did okay. I mean, none of the units really, I guess, paid for themselves. I mean, I think this is a matchup that is hard for units to pay for themselves because the, the um, Lizardmen, they have a lot of cheap stuff that are very hard to compromise. Like this chameleon skinks, I mean, they, they generally always get their goddamn value. Like, no matter how much you try and shut them down. Um, yeah. I, I try to put pressure... I mean, I did enough to put pressure on these Bacillus and Solar Engine that they didn't do enough value. But you see, like, there's, all, there's still like 315 units left in the Lizardman army. Like, if the battle went on, I could have gotten more value on these, some of these troops. They guard, they pay for themselves. They did very well. And the Wild Riders, one of them didn't. The other one actually didn't as well. I mean, when you're fighting Skinks and you're taking just Javelin Fire and like low darts, you could get a lot of kills, but like, you know, they're just so, so ridiculously cheap. Um, but you still need mobility in this matchup, right? I mean, just to fend off these Cold One Riders. So yeah, I think overall, this is how I would want a battle against the Lizardmen to play out, you know? Soak up a bit of damage with the Eternal Guard against the Skirmishers, then send in the Dryads, uh, win the front line with your help with the ranged tools. And then once you break through, you start um, putting enough pressure that these solar engines can no longer gain value. Okay, so for my final match, um, so uh, Maker has to choose uh, two factions and he went uh, Vampire Coast as well as green skins and um and then i had to counter pick so i went uh empire here and of course empire being a good pick against vampire coast he went green skins which albeit i think green skins generally is favored here but is very doable for um for empire as well and uh, i went for a bit of a kiting army uh, as empire so as you can see, I have Boris Toddbringer as my legendary lord. Uh, he has a light wizard um, with uh, Shem's Burning Gaze, as well as uh, Nat of Amentok, and he's on a Pegasus. We have four units of Spear, only one of them with shields, and then we have four units of Cab. Two of them being Empire Knights, two of them being two of them being uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun, which will do very well against Stone Trolls, which are generally the meta pick nowadays. And um, and for my Skirmishing core, I have two units of Outriders, so these two units, and two units of Grenade Launchers, as well as one unit of Pistoliers. So let's see uh, how this fares against Maker's build who also brought a large uh, Missile Cav core of uh, Forest Goblin, Spider Rider, Archers, uh, Morgrim's Mage Marauder. Um, so, so I believe, yeah, three units of um, Goblin, Wolf, Rider, Archer, one of them being the Morgrim's Mage Marauders, and two units of uh, Spider Archers for that poison. He has four units of Goblins in the back, and four units of uh, Orc Boys. He has two units of Stone Trolls guarding the Hammer of Gork 
and two units of uh, Orc Boar Boy Biggins uh, to help against the Cav because they are anti Cav specialists. He has uh, the ROR um, uh, Night Gobble Fanatics, the AP Goonies, and uh, and uh, he has Warzag with uh, with uh, Gaze of Mork as well as Brain Burster. Um, effigy, and I believe also the Bone Witch Staff. So, if you're just looking at this build, I mean, even Viking Cat, when he was commentating uh, the Smash on stream, was saying that, you know, it was kind of a counter build that the green skin had against my, my, my skirmishing, because I'm going to be constantly pressured by this Hammer of Gork, who, you know, causes it's blind, you know, is going to kill models off my Missile Cav, and, um... It's just going to be a nuisance overall. And then these, you know, these green skin skirmishers, they're just so cost effective for what they do. I mean, skirmish, cap battle is generally about numbers. And because these um, wolf riders, they have. Oh no, these are not a wolf riders. These are all. Are these wolf riders? Yeah, these are wolf riders. I mean, I mean the symbols, they just look the same, almost. I mean, these two spider riders. Spider riders only have 45 models, but the wolf riders, man, they have 60 models. And in a skirmish battle, like, with missile cav, it's generally just about how many numbers. And because they have 60 models, like, you know, it's, it's hard to kill all of them. Of course, you know, they have lower leadership, so you can route them faster, and um, they do have less HP, but it is going to be a tough battle. So let's see how this pans out. Um, so I'm sending in my missile cav because I don't want to be rushing into this fight. I mean, there's no way I could just win this frontline fight. Maybe if I just do really good cycle charging, but I wanted to get at least get a lot of skirmishing done in early time. And he's doing a good job, you know, dodging these grenade launchers. I mean, you, I think, I think if the if the green skins place this really like really well. And I don't, you know, cast the net of Ammon talk. Like, it's hard for the Empire grenade launchers to do a lot of damage. Um, but, but, you know, um, we'll see. Because grenade launchers, are, they are pretty slow. So it, it, it kind of forces, like, it requires your opponent to mess up. I mean, but then, you know, the, the, the gunpowder units, you know, the, the, the pistoliers and the, uh, the outriders, it's, 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 it's hard to dodge those shots. So one gaze of Mork gone straight into the Light Wizard, and I didn't manage to dodge that. And uh, these outriders are taking a lot of damage from the Hammer of Orc as well as the Mageing's Marauder, so... Yeah, already not looking super good right now. I mean, I've done some damage to these uh, Sworn Spider... I mean, these Spider Riders and Wolf Riders, but they're not very important. And I got a huge Shem's Burning Gaze on Horzak here. He also took some... Uh, I, think, I think this battle was really lucky for me because he's just constantly overcasting. I mean, he didn't overcast there. I dodged some of... I dodged all... I mean, I dodged one of the projectiles, which isn't enough, but I'm not taking too much damage on the Light Wizard just yet. Um, yeah, these Outriders, man, they're just taking boulders to the face uh, from the Hammer of Gork, and they're already routing, gaining, like, very little value right now. They only have how many models? They only have 14 models left, and they only killed five. Like, not very good. So another uh, Gaze of Mark comes in, deals very good damage. Um, yeah, but then I cast, oh I, I overcast it, but not too much damage. And I do good damage against the uh, Warzag. So that's very nice. Boris is just there to tank some damage. He has regen, so that's really nice. And, um, I mean, right now, already, one Outrider, one, uh, Outrider Grenade Launcher has already been routed. I dive Boris in. He can get some quick terror routes. Hopefully, yeah, he gets one routing. And Warzag, uh, 
overcasted and uh, suffer some overcast damage, and he's pretty low right now. He did some good damage to the uh, Light Wizard, but it's not a trade that he can afford to take, so he's moving up his lines to try and screen me out. I get one really nice volley of grenades finally into these uh, spider archers, and that did a lot of damage, forced them back. And I'm um, slowly gaining value on these uh, Outrider grenade launchers. I mean, this one was taking so much damage from the Hammer of War. Um, only 14 models out of 36, but let's see how they do in the end. Pistoliers taking damage, they can take some damage. And boom, another good volley of grenade launchers. Playing them down to about a quarter health and routing these uh, Wolf Riders. And finally, you know, now that the lines have uh, Lines have um, closed in. I could get some grenade launcher shots into these orc boys. Not a lot of damage, I mean, because this this unit has only 13 models left. But um, you know, you know, I need to thin out a lot of this green skin infantry because I only have you know four units compared to this nine units of infantry. Uh, skirmisher just trying to get some damage onto the. Light Wizard, I'm trying to dodge and they take another big volley. Surprised it hasn't shattered yet, but um, they're routing and they're not going to be the big issue. These uh, these Wolf Riders, seeing these guys route, they also route. So that's the one thing about Green Skins is that their leadership is the one thing that kind of holds them back. And um, yeah, I'm doing some good damage on these Stone Trolls, even though they have their Missile Resist. I overcast it again, which sucks, and it just went into the ground. So this was a really bad trade. Um, I was ahead in the missile magic missile duel, but then now like we're kind of even in some respect. And um, finally getting good damage. I managed to dodge most of that arrow fire. And um, now I'm sending in my cap. So Knights of Blazing Sun into these work boys. Shooting units of Empire Knights into these tattered orc boys. And just doing good cycle charging, you know? Don't stay for too long. Get some get some free damage. But uh try not to take much damage in the back in return. Because I don't have healing for any of my troops. So I have to be very, very conscientious of uh, my cavalry. Um these Empire Knights are taking a bit of damage from these uh mainly from the mage and marauder. And I send in the stone trolls. Or send in the, the, the spearmen to block these stone trolls. Forest lands, gets a quick, uh, well, get these guys to waver, but uh, hopefully they can start routing. And boom! Man, a big hit from uh, Words Egg onto the uh, Light Wizard, and uh, he's routing. He's not gonna come back, unfortunately. Nice. Empire Knights taking a bit of damage from the charge from the stone trolls and the orc boys. And this line, you know, is breaking. This is, this is bad, so I just send in the nice little Blazing Sun. Boris managed to clean up this flank. Uh, I just have to send in the Knights of Blazing Sun, try and get a good wraparound on these uh, Orc boys. But this, this, is, this is bad because like, the Pistoliers, I have to send them into melee. They used up all their ammo, but I have to hold this, this flank back. But you know, one unit of Stone Trolls is routing. Boris comes in, you know, crush the weak, Blood War, managed to get a good terror route. And, and, and the green skins are clean. And I need to pursue a bit, but um, I mean, this is only just a terror route, so they're gonna come back, unfortunately. But I managed to get a good um, good route here, and I'm yeah trying to pursue, but you know they come back. Boris got a um, effigy, but you know he's not in real danger. And I just send in my, my cavalry just down the center, trying to keep on pushing the pressure. They do come back, but um, yeah, a lot of my skirmish cav is also getting caught up, which is not very good. I mean, I try to get a good uh, volley onto these uh, Majin's Marauder, but they're they're getting caught up by these uh, goblins and ooh, taking a lot of damage, especially with the walk. But I managed to route them. Empire Knights in the rear, get a good surround. Gets a brain buster, but not too much damage. I mean, this was this was bad though. Like losing these outriders right here to these goblins. They have law active. I mean, just look how much damage they're taking. 
So they route. I mean, that was really bad. But I managed to route these or I mean, terror route these uh, four boys. I have some units back, but you can see the balance of power is actually pretty in my favor, mainly because I guess Warzag is really low, and uh, and all his like you know his trolls and stuff are taking have taken a lot of damage. I mean, as long as they keep the pressure up, you know, I could do very well. I mean, this unit of orc boys is routed, so I'm sending these uh, these spearmen forward. Let's start putting pressure on Warzag. I maybe could have gone some nice uh, outrider shots and tried maybe snipe Warzag earlier on, but yeah, you know, the Empire Knights, nice little baiting sun. Oh my god. I mean, this was an intense battle, man. Um, he's trying to push his lines through, but um, yeah. But I think it's a little too late, you know. Um, a lot of his units are routing. And when, they're, and, and when the Greenskins are routing and you keep on putting the pressure up, it's hard for the Greenskins to regroup. So you just need that one big break, and I got it in this battle. Um, have the spearmen here they're gonna i mean the, the orc boys are gonna do very well against these empire knights i mean they're just, they're just designed to kill empire knights but spearmen will uh, will do a good number on these guys warzag is shattered and uh my missile cav even though they're battered they're still functional and they can still do a decent amount of damage i mean these pistol i mean these outriders they still have you know decent amount of ammunition grenade launcher have about you know um three more shots but I mean these are just chaff I don't really need to engage like as long as I keep the pressure up on the on the important stuff and what you saw um you know the I could just keep on kiting the the slow infantry so I mean this was a very very tough battle I mean one of my outriders only had like like what got down to 14 models before they could do any real damage but they still managed to pay for themselves and this is why outriders are just amazing I mean, if you could just get them on infantry and they're uncontested, and they'll do a lot of damage. The Outriders, they didn't pay for themselves. They still had some ammo left, but, um, but, um, I mean, I guess their ideal targets would have been these Boar Boys, which I should have been shooting. Pistoliers, they used up all their ammo. They got their value back. Um, Knights of the Blazing Sun, I guess, yeah, I could have been a bit more, um, better with the cycle charging i did some good cycle charging early on without taking a lot of damage but you know when the battle and my when, when the spearmen started to like waver you know i had to commit them in melee and um, they started taking a lot of damage but i mean it's not bad you see that like the green skin still had a lot of units left on the field so like i mean they could have gotten their value back if they were able to fight everything and they were able to chase them off but yeah, the Empire Knights also didn't really pay for themselves, but they did a good job holding. I mean, the, the armor really helps, and only the Stone Trolls and the uh, Orc Boys and I guess the, the Rock Lobber here could have dealt with them effectively. Spearmen, I mean, they were fighting trash for most of it. I mean, you, you really can't expect them to win against the front line of the Greenskins. But like, you just see, like, I didn't, a lot of my units, they didn't really pay for themselves, but I won the important engagements, and as long as they were routing, you know, these stone trolls, they didn't pay for themselves either, right? And um, as long as I removed the key threats, right? Like these orc boys, they didn't pay for themselves. These stone trolls didn't pay for themselves. I mean, the rock lobber did. I mean, I, I just didn't really have answers for, the, for, for this unit, other than just like wasting all their ammo, and hopefully I still had enough left to finish the job. Um, this spider rider paid for itself. Wolf rider, one of them paid for themselves, the other didn't. And the mages marauder, oh my god, 1200 value. I mean, just talk about freaking like value city, man. And this is why green skin skirmishers they are super annoying to deal with. Um, even if you have a you know considerably stronger skirmish core, it's just hard to shut them down effectively without them messing up. But overall, I think um, mainly it was Warzag getting low in the beginning with the missile trades, missile magic missile trades, and um, that would just really, you know, just held the maker back from just you know kind of overwhelming my lines. But um, yeah, good games, good games. Um, 
this was an intense battle. I'm still kind of surprised I won this, but um, GG's, man. GGs.